Craziest tragedies found on Roblox. That's right, there's a lot of absurd tragedies still being discovered, such as a balloon disaster that went horribly wrong, to some of the most terrifying plane disasters imaginable. I'm going to take a look at these different Roblox games and then see what tragedies they're based on and what actually went wrong on such horrific events. All right, so the first one we have here is, uh, it's Balloon Simulator. And you may be surprised, but, uh, disasters with balloons have actually happened in the past. So this is a bit of a stretch, but I did think about different disasters when I placed balloons onto these different chairs here because in real life this has actually happened. Don't believe me? Take a look at this video here. This is a video of a Catholic priest who tied himself to 1,000 balloons and set off to break the 19 hour record for longest time ballooned up. Yeah, was he on a he, chair as unfortunately, well? unfortunately, did not live to tell the tale. Okay. On April 20th, 2008, Adelir Antonio De Carli put on a helmet and aluminum thermal flight suit and waterproof coveralls and set off on his journey. About eight hours into the flight, his GPS turned off and he went off the grid. So he didn't no have like a backup GPS or something? It. Two days later, a number of multicolored balloons were discovered. Then months after that, they unfortunately found his body. He is said to have reached an altitude of 20,000 feet Jeez, and was that's blown incredibly off course high. while descending. His body was eventually found by chance by tugboat workers. Yeah, I think he had only planned for like 10,000 feet. One of the comments here say he went too high and suffocated due to the thin atmosphere over 2,000 feet. So yeah, the sport itself is called cluster ballooning. Yes, it's actually a thing. It's an extreme sport and a form of ballooning where a harness attaches a balloonist to a cluster of helium inflated rubber balloons. And yeah, unfortunately to this priest, who they're dubbing the balloon priest, he died during an attempt at cluster ballooning on April 2008. The only reason he was doing this was to bring attention and to raise money to fund a spiritual rest area for truck drivers. Wait, what's it say here? He took some paragliding courses, but he refused to attend the theory classes and and after two incidences where he disobeyed his instructor, he was expelled from the school. Oh geez, so there's some earlier signs here. This trip wasn't also his first one. He had done a four hour practice run before where he used 600 balloons and reached heights of 17,000 feet, which is still extremely high. I would hate all this. So after he got lost, they weren't able to find his body for another couple of months until in July, they found a lower half of a human body floating on the ocean surface. Oh geez, that must have been horrifying. Yet yeah, the whole thing was just really crazy. Believe it or not, he's not the first person to have done this. There's been uh, multiple people using balloons to fly extremely high above ground. One man even using his lawn chair, dubbing him Lawn Chair Larry. He unfortunately got entangled by the power lines, so was able to climb down safely, but other people aren't so lucky. And I know what you're thinking with all these balloons and all that. It makes you think of the movie Up, the one with the giant house and balloons. While the house releasing hundreds of thousand balloons may not be real, what is real is 100,000 balloons being released out into the public. Take a look at this video here. This massive publicity stunt indirectly led to the deaths of two people and caused millions in property and environmental damage. So okay. what happened? Balloon Fest 86 was held in Cleveland, Ohio on September 27th, 1986. Yeah, yeah. Intended to be a harmless publicity stunt, the event's organizers were trying to set a world record by releasing 1.4 million balloons into the sky at once. Yeah, I think they were trying to beat Disney for like most balloons released at once. The bad thing was that they released all these balloons into the city. When it looked like there was a rainstorm on the horizon, organizers decided to release the balloons earlier than anticipated and at 1.50 p.m. all 1.4 million balloons, balloons here? rose up from public square and surrounded terminal tower organizers expected the balloons to eventually float down to the ground but because of the rain and colder than anticipated weather the balloons continued to float drifting away until they clouded the sky in one big mass naturally the sight caused many drivers to become distracted and multiple accidents were cited in the area at the time geez that's insane but the worst impact that balloon fest had on the surrounding area would be its impact on the coast guard's ability to find two men who had been reported missing that morning and the coast guard began to search the waters before their rescue attempts were ruined by the sudden influxation of balloons. Oh no! It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, one of the authorities conducting the rescue mission later remarked. You're looking for more or less a head or an orange life jacket, and here you have a couple hundred thousand orange balloons. It's just hard to decipher which is which. The Coast Guard suspended its search two days later, and the men's bodies washed on shore shortly after. I mean, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it caused problems for traffic and a nearby airport. Did they not think about that at all? Yeah, the organizers and the city faced lawsuits seeking millions of dollars in damage, and cost overruns put the event at a net loss. So yeah, they lost a lot of money for this. And so yeah, there was a total of two deaths, indirectly. Um, apparently multiple horses were injured during the event. I, I guess they were like scared by all the things floating up into the sky. 
sky, as well as multiple traffic collisions. And yeah, the main problem was that they all assumed the balloons would reach an altitude where they popped and disintegrated, but uh, that wasn't the case because a lot of them just fell back down into the water. Motorists ran into fences and each other before the roadway was shut down. A bulldozer was needed to help clear away the balloons. Man, who knew balloons could be so deadly? But it's definitely not as deadly as a plane incident. More specifically, the US Air Flight 1016. So I'm not familiar with this one, so let's go ahead and see what happened here. All right, so there's like a long road. There's a house right there. There's a plane. Oh, oh, there's a plane. Oh, it just like ran straight into the house right there. Okay, hold on. Let's check it out again. So it's coming up from this way. I do notice that it's raining. So were they not able to see where they were going or what, what happened? Could it have been the lightning that struck it? Yeah, look at the destruction there. There's also this other game here that's pretty similar as well. Where you can see there's a little bit more detail on the plane. But yeah, this does appear to be some sort of house that did get destroyed by the plane here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the animation and see what happened. All right, so everything's looking fine right now. Oh, we're heading into bad weather now. It's about to land, okay. Oh, it's already starting to shake. Oh, so it starts running into trees? Uh... Oh no, there's the house there. Wait, so what exactly happened then? So in 1994, the flight encountered heavy thunderstorms and microbursts induced wind shear while attempting to land and crashed into heavy trees in a private residence near the airport. In total, there was 37 fatalities with 20 survivors. And uh, according to this picture here, the ones in the front seem to have survived with minor injuries. It was the ones in the middle that were not so lucky. Okay, so it says here that tower controller issued a wind shear warning to all aircraft, but on a different radio frequency than that used by flight 1016. So they weren't aware of the strong winds then. About a minute later, the captain, realizing that his aircraft was in serious predicament, attempted to abort the landing by instructing the first officer to take it around, go to the right. The plane struggled to climb into the severe weather conditions, veered to the right, and rapidly descended. It was later determined that the wind shear alert system did not alert the crew with the red indicator. The plane broke into four major sections, with the tail and the rear mounted engines coming to a rest at the carport of a house. No one on the ground was injured. Well, that's good at least. But yeah, that's unfortunate that there are some faulty system errors. But another plane tragedy that we have here is the National Airlines 102. It says here the cause is stall. Does that mean that the plane just like stopped flying at some point? Let's check this out. All right, so where, oh. Uh, wait, I, I didn't see it. What happened here? Okay, so is there bad weather again? Or yeah, the plane's just not even flying. It's just kind of like at a standstill. Was this like another weather related crash? I also see it was near the runway. Was it barely taking off or what happened? Here, let's take a look at the animation. Okay, yeah, so they're barely leaving the runway. So what caused it to stall then? All right, so it's going and then at some point it's just going to halt. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, wait, what happened to the back part there? Oh, dude, I hate this. Oh, it falls sideways? Oof. Oh, jeez. What happened there? The actual footage on how the plane crashed is really terrifying. Yeah, we're not going to look at that. Uh, so this happened in 2013 with seven occupants on board and seven fatalities. So it was concluded that improperly secured cargo broke free during the takeoff and rolled to the back of the cargo hold, crashing through the rear pressure bulkhead and disabling the rear flight control systems. This rendered the air truck stuck in an uncontrollable pitch up attitude and induced a stall and made recovery by the pilots impossible. Oh, and the cargo was uh, five heavy armored vehicles. Well, was it this one? Yeah, that's pretty huge. So these things weren't secured then. Yet the whole aircraft exploded into a large fireball, almost damaging the vehicles nearby. That's so tragic. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below what tragedies you want me to cover. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.